I'm very honored to receive the Jen Du Prize today. It is so humbling to be chosen from among the many women that deserve this. I would like to thank the selection committee and I'm very happy to receive this prize alongside the Ferris Lambert. It is an enormous privilege to be recognized here with her today. It has been 36 years since I opened my own studio and 28 years since establishing Sana with Nishizawa. Back then, I did not imagine working on so many projects around the world. I am very grateful for all the opportunities that have come our way. I would not be here if it would not for our clients who gave us the chance to realize our design and visions, as well as our extremely dedicated staff without which we would not exist. We have also been fortunate to work with outstanding consultants and engineers who helped us to build our dreams. One of the most important things I learned in my career is that architecture is always teamwork, a space of collaboration when many different types of people come together. Throughout my career, I have been exploring the idea of architecture like a park, a communal space where different people come together. My first project as an independent architect were two small weekend house near Tokyo. They are called platform because I was thinking about ways to create spaces that were open and continuous with the surrounding environment, something that has defined my work for the last 35 years. This is my first construction site. I think structure is very important. People should understand how a building is made. I keep designing homes because we can live in old stores or places, and I use this smaller project to explore new ideas. This is platform two. It looks almost like a temporary structure in the forest. For this one, I looked a singular structure system could define different types of the spaces and open to view to the sky. The room is filled with a soft line. My first middle-scale project was the women's dormitory in Japan. It was built to house up to 80 female employees. They would live together for their first year of training. This is a plan. In this first version, all the beds are one big room. The client said no. This is the final living space for 80 people. I was looking at soft boundaries between activities. It comes a street through the building. Getting bigger, the, this project in Gifu was for 107 homes. It was one of four apartment buildings, all commissioned to female architects by Isozaki. All rooms are arranged along one open veranda. The Japanese government asked for very conventional house types, one bedroom, two bedroom, etc. But the family style was changing and I wanted to make a new type of building where people could live together differently. This facade showed the organization of each home. But on this side, we cannot imagine the boundary between one home and the next it becomes a group of individuals living together. The terraces also cut through the thin volume, bringing the transparency to the building. This is a house where the two pa parents, two children, and grandmother live together. They wanted a house that looks like one large room. We challenged the relationship between the number of inhabitants and number of rooms. In total, there are tiny, tiny 20 rooms. 
since all the rooms are very small, we decided to make the walls out of the 16 mm thick iron plates and use them as structure. This showed a narrow proportion of one children's bedroom. Another bedroom has a view through to the dining room. Overlooking the dining table, the level changes offer both privacy and visual continuity at the same time. The neighboring park can be seen from the terrace. This was Sana's first international project in Almere in the Netherlands. It is built like a pier on the lake. The program required three auditoriums of different sizes and many rooms for public activities such as music and painting classes. We eliminated corridors and wanted to give equal importance to each of the rooms regardless of their size. They created a landscape of activities. Each room has its own special relationship to the lake. This was our first museum project at Sana. It is located in the center of the city of Kanazawa in Japan. We made a circular building. It has four entrances and can be approached from all sides. The museum area is located in the center, while the public zone for the community is located on the edge. But there is no clear boundary between the two. There are study models. Our concept was to create a museum that would be like a town. We wanted people to have the freedom to choose their path, like in the urban neighborhood. In the central area, there are 19 exhibition rooms of various size and proportions. They can be combined to for one large exhibition space several smaller exhibition spaces, or 19 independent galleries. The deep building has four courtyards, inviting natural light and the surrounding atmosphere inside. Sometimes the installations spill outside into the gardens and change the relationship between building and city. Museum activities and contexts are overlaid and the building's appearance changes uh, continuously. The new museum is a contemporary art museum in Manhattan. Despite the large program and small footprint, we tried to design a building that showed continuity with a fragmented cityscape scope. By stacking and shifting boxes of different proportions, we could create varying relationship to the city. Although it is a larger opaque building, it is carved with reflective aluminum mesh. This broad is giving a sense of transparency. This is our design for a learning center at EPFO in Lausanne. Our, half, our first idea was to create a, a one-room public space where people can easily come together. Instead of dividing a program using walls, we introduced a new topography. The valleys, hills, and slopes are all gently connected. The entrance is located in the middle of the plan and the floor slab lifts off the ground. This creates a sh sheltered public uh, uh, space for the whole campus. As people go up and down, the relationship between programs changes, offering different levels of intimacy. And it creates a new landscape for the city. This is our only finished project in the UK, the Serpentine Pavilion. It is such a beautiful park, so we designed a reflective aluminum roof that floats through the trees, enhancing the natural surroundings. The roof is under undulating. Sometimes it is a canopy, sometimes it becomes a table. It blends together with the trees. This is our design for the Louvre Lens, a satellite of the Paris Museum. Lens is an old main mine town 
the museum extend more than 400 but meter, but we broke the programs into five main volumes to minimize the physical presence of the large building. They are posi positioned at the center of the new public park. Each volume is gently carved and stepped, responding to the characteristics of the site itself. The central transparent volume is the foyer. It becomes a public space for the many small villages that surround the site. Each has its own decided, dedicated entrance to the museum. This is view of the Time Gallery has permanent exhibition space. It is lined with aluminum, reflecting both artwork and visitors. The exterior walls also the uh, aluminum and reflect the sky and surrounding nature. This is Grace Farm in New Canyon, Connecticut. When we first visit, we are very impressed by the 30 meter level difference across the site. So we imagined a building that could flow down this landscape like a river. Each activity is set against the backdrop of the nature surroundings. The canopy connects the programs and the shape itself creates small patios. The large volume are sunken into the ground. The building is very subtle on the horizon. This is Inejima, a small island in the Japanese island sea. This plan shows the various stages of the project. The red line shows the phase one project area, the village become a museum. The blue lines show the phase two extension. We invited people to enjoy the beautiful landscape of the island by cutting a new path through the bamboo forest. The yellow path show the phase three accommodation areas. Gradually, I realized the whole island become architecture and our designs are part of a total environment. During the first phase, we, we inserted a series of small galleries in the village. As much as possible, we renovated existing houses that were in a state of disappear. I wanted to show that even this traditional house could open to the surroundings. In the open site, we inserted acrylic pavilion, old and new come together at one. Gardens extend inside and out. By walking through the museum visitors, being to understand the history and landscape of the island. In the second phase, we designed the community areas for the local people. We renovated an old greenhouse and added a kitchen, dining space, and water filtering garden. This is our most recent completed building, the Sydney Modern. The site is made of a land bridge and old oil tank. A retaining wall connects the two. Our design stitches together the elements to make a new ground that site together with the industrial history of Sydney in harbor. This is a main lobby at the top of the hill. From here, you can look down through the strat strata of the project and upwards through layers of the activities. We also restore the old oil tanks this becomes a different type of gallery space that reflects the history of the city. And the external staircase connects the museum, city, and the botanical gardens. At, with a platform houses, it becomes a series of layers that connect the building with the surroundings, dispelling the museum into this, co into this context. It becomes a landscape. This is the last image. Thank you very much.